What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. You've seen the teaser, you've seen the preview. If you didn't, links are in the top right corner. Now this is finally the real deal here in front of me. The LEGO Technic 42141 McLaren Formula 1 race car. Hey, did you notice that 2022 is not in the official name of the set? It's only on the box. Yeah, more about this in a few minutes. So I don't want to spend too much time with the box as we did it already in the preview. You can see the car on the front with the official McLaren logo. As I mentioned previously, the black 18 plus box design looks actually pretty decent this time. Another view on the back, photos of the 2021 car and the thing. In the bottom row, let's open it. The set has 1432 pieces. It's an 18 plus set, as I said, which has nothing to do with the complexity as usual. And the price is 180 euros or dollars. It will be available on lego.com from the 1st of March. We have 10 numbered bags in the box with four building phases, one unnumbered bag, four tires, and a manual with the sticker sheets. Three sticker sheets, so it's a lot, which is understandable in the case of a Formula 1 car, but at least the number of stickers is less than what the BMW bike had. The manual is nice, and on the very first pages we see the LEGO model, and according to the huge text, this is the 2022 McLaren Formula 1 car. There's one tiny little problem, this is not McLaren's 2022 Formula 1 car. If you know a little bit about Formula 1, and if you followed the 2022 reviews recently, this is a huge hide and seek game with the new designs and everything. Some teams barely revealed the 2022 liveries on mock-up cars, so we still don't know how they will really look like at the first race. 2022 is an important year for Formula 1 as there are very big design changes compared to the previous years and the teams really don't want to reveal how their first attempts in this new era look like. I don't want to spend too much time with this. Here's a quick comparison between the car in the manual and the one that was revealed by McLaren last week. You can clearly see the difference yourself. I will probably dedicate a separate video to this whole story. Let's focus now on the LEGO set. The manual has some nice words about the whole cooperation and the challenges of the designer. Here is the part list if you are interested. Now let's start building. The process begins with the differential at the rear and the elements of the rear suspension. After adding the wheel hubs and the axles, there's one sad thing to realize already at this point. There's no way any differential locking mechanism would fit here. So it really was just a typo in the press release. By the way, a lot of you asked where did I get that information in the preview video. You can check it on McLaren.com, it's still there today, unchanged. Apparently technical folks at McLaren or at LEGO don't proofread their press releases, it's a bummer. The structure of the rear axle is now complete with the double wishbone setup and the initial elements of the pushrod suspension. And now with the shock absorbers added you can see how this pushrod suspension will work, although this structure still needs a lot of reinforcement, but the concept itself is clearly visible. By the way, if this whole setup looks awfully familiar to you, then it's not a glitch in the matrix. This H-shaped lift arm has been around since 2014, but it was not available so far in black, so it's a nice addition to the lineup. The rear axle is mounted now in this huge Technic frame. Some reinforcement for the suspension, and then comes the V6 engine. This is the end of bags 1. Bags 2 start with the steering rack, and this is the first appearance of this 5x7 Technic frame in orange. The front section of the car is long and narrow, built symmetrically around the central Technic frames. It is not a particularly difficult build, but definitely requires attention. We are setting up the front suspension, and here's an interesting thing. By forcing the shock absorbers to that small space, they will be half compressed by default. It makes the suspension travel shorter, but I'm not sure how it affects the pieces themselves on a longer term. Here you can see the difference again, still uncompressed here, half compressed when it is in place. Certain steps might not be totally clear for the first sight, as there are a lot of things going on at the same time, and you can get lost in the forest of wishbones, but once you figure it out, it is quite self-explanatory. Here is the front pushrod suspension in action. Yes, I know the real one has pull rod at the front. It still requires some reinforcement at the end of that dark bluish grey axle. You can see how the different forces are twisting and turning the whole assembly. A little attention to detail that will be surely appreciated by the LEGO All Black Squad. The black version of the two module long axle is used here and not the red one. It also appears at other visible places. And a definitely more interesting novelty, a new panel fairing number 70 and 71. 
It's more square this time and asymmetric. The L shape matches this previous panel we know. It has an axle hole so can be fixed in place, like you see here on the car, acting as the way control winglets. We survived the first 124 steps without stickers, but that changes now and many more will follow. Time to add the steering arms as well, and here is the brick built steering wheel with some stickers. This is how the steering works, and here's a small but annoying detail. Due to those two A2 gears used in the steering system, if you center the steering wheel then the wheels won't be straight, or if you set those straight then the steering wheel won't be centered. And here's the introduction of this brand new 3x19 Technic frame. It is surprisingly big, has two internal columns for extra stability, and it's quite sturdy. I'm looking forward to see how it will be used in future builds, seems to be quite useful. Here's another one for the other side, it's a challenge to find the proper holes for this amount of pins. Meanwhile the seat was also installed, Formula 1 really seems to be a sport for slim guys only. Now it's time to make that front suspension more stable with these additional pieces, it really works much better. Time to extend the frame towards the rear, and then we can connect it to the assembly of the rear axle with the engine which is not the easiest task. After a few reinforcements we are done with backs too, and it's already visible how huge will be the end result, here's a Speed Champions Lamborghini for scale. With BAX 3 we start to add various details to the rear, both with Technic and System pieces. Now a set of bigger panels and panel fairings, this increases the size of the car quickly. This big curved panel appears in two new colors in this set, you'll see soon the black one besides this blue version. I like how these pneumatic connectors are used to support the flag pieces, and how this structure forms the openings of the Venturi tunnels. Too bad the tunnels themselves are not built, but they wouldn't fit here anyway with this structure. Yet another interesting superstructure built with half beams to hold this panel at a specific angle on the side. And here is a new piece that we could already see on the photos, the one module wide version of this also not very old curved panel. I don't know yet the official name, but as someone mentioned on Eurobricks, it looks like a roll of toilet paper. These go here as the first element of the front wing, and here comes the rest with the blue and black big triangular panels. Here comes the nose section, and then this black rotor piece goes to the rear, this is the end of BAX 3. BAX 4 begin with the area behind the seat, oops, the orientation of that piece does matter to be able to connect that pin on top of the seat. Well, this one did not become more comfortable for sure. The top of the side, what is a massive orange assembly with lots of stickers, needs some adjustments to find its place. Then the same thing goes to the other side as well. Time to add the rear view mirrors and the small panel fairings forming the side pod air intakes. It's a bit unusual to see the end of that axle just hanging there with only a half beam supporting it, maybe it's time to have black half bushes after all these years. Adding some body panels towards the rear, and then comes the rear wing that has a whole bunch of trickery with half beams, pins and connectors all around the place. Two nice blue toilet paper rolls to the corners, maybe that's a special sponsor. Then comes the manually adjustable DRS panel, and the whole thing goes in place. The end is near, this will be the halo with this suspension arm that is new in orange. This is not the first case in this set when we are left with exposed pins and excellence, they look quite unfinished. Two of the new red half pins with friction are added here for no particular reason. Considering the structure, the regular half pins could have been totally acceptable. Maybe it was a nod to the Rebricable logo. There's a very interesting support structure built on it by the way using these elements, giving a very solid base for this snot build. The top of the body is now in place, and all we have left are the wheels with the wheel covers. They are not printed of course, it's quite tricky to put these huge stickers on correctly. So, we attach all the wheels, then the wheel covers, and we are done. So, my first reaction is impressive. The color combination is nice and vibrant, it grabs your attention. The overall look is okay, the whole thing looks proportional and detailed enough for the first sight. I really like the new panel and its usage, fits well at all places. We have working suspension at the front and at the rear, the steering wheel turns, the real wheels are driving the V6 engines through the differential, with this cutout you can see some mechanical action, so you can happily acknowledge that you built a Technic set. If you agree with this summary so far and you are happy with it, if you like the set as it is and you don't have any strange feelings like something is wrong or missing, then I suggest to stop the video here, buy the set and enjoy building. Really, no hard feelings, we are not the same, I can completely see that there's a target audience for this set as it is and we shouldn't mock anyone who likes it this way. But, and it's a big but, no, with one T. 
If you are a Formula 1 fan or a Technic fan or maybe both, then I totally understand your confusion. This is the 2021 McLaren livery on a car that has a few features according to the generic 2022 Formula 1 regulations, but practically nothing distinctive from the 2022 McLaren Formula 1 car itself. Why? Well, because these features are super top secret before the season starts, they are secured like nuclear launch codes, and there's no way McLaren would share them in advance. This car, for example, doesn't have a pull rod suspension at the front, because that was one of the big surprises they did, and I'm sure it was a super secret feature. It's not difficult to see that the scheduling of this set was a huge failure. Don't you think there's a reason why you cannot buy die-cast models of 2022 Formula 1 cars before the start of the season? Because the cars are not ready yet, and whatever is defined already is top secret. Now let's see the perspective of a Technic fan. It's an 18 plus licensed Technic set, so we already learned what this means. Empty, fancy shell with minimal functions. I think it is quite ironic to read such things in the manual from the designer. It wouldn't be a real Technic model without things like the working differential and steering. Well, I'm glad the Technic set has at least these features, although those are present in the 40 euro Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 as well, so for 180 euros we would expect more than a higher piece count. Here is the 42000 Grand Prix Racer from 2013, roughly 300 pieces less, about $30 cheaper in today's money. It has the exact same front and rear suspension, but apart from the core Technic features like the differential and the steering, it also has hand of gut steering, a switch mechanism to select the engine cover opening or the DRS adjustment, and it has a cool B model. But of course, it did not have a license. You can decide which one is more important for you. I won't compare the look because I could only compare that to the photos in the manual, but there's one thing I have to mention, the tire choice. Formula 1 cars had a radical wheel size change in 2022, they went from 13 inch to 18 inch. The tire diameter was also increased from 67 cm to 72 cm. The width stayed the same, front wheels have 305 mm tread width, rear ones have 405 mm. You can clearly see on this photo as well, the rear tires are way way wider. I won't bore you with the math, but the car has approximately 1 8 scale, so do the wheels. So, instead of the Thunder tires, they could have used the wheels from the Grand Prix Racer at the front, and these ones from the legendary Silver Champion set from the year 2000 at the back. Oh, as you see, back those days, we even got printed tires. This combination looks way more accurate, I think, and even if they wouldn't change the tread, they could have called these intermediate tires, for example. The print is also weird, why does it say P0 on the wet tires? If you check the 2021 Mercedes Speed Champions car, that one has the accurate print on it for the blue wet Pirellis. I thought the design will change for 2022 since someone should have approved this print from Pirelli's side, but based on what we saw during the first test, this is still the correct design. So, how to sum it up? We need to observe this set in the context of the target audience. Most of the young or adult casual Technic builders probably never built an older Technic F1 car. This might be a nice build for them, and also a good parts pack with all the wishbones and panels. The end result is big, impressive, and technically it is made of Technic parts with a few moving things here and there. But if you are a die-hard Technic fan or the owner of a full LEGO Formula 1 collection at home, and you are looking for a fresh 2022 interpretation of the subject, then you will be probably disappointed. But, going back to the question of the intended 18 plus target audience, who will buy a license set from a racing series? The fans, of course. Even if they are casual builders, so they are fine with a mildly challenging building experience, if they get an impressive display piece at the end, this whole mixed bag of the 2021 livery and the 2022-ish design is a huge miss for them, because they are Formula 1 fans and they know these cars very well. They have plenty of opportunities to criticize the whole concept, many of the technical and design details don't match, so that big logo on the front of the box is a huge red flag for them. This isn't McLaren's 2022 Formula 1 car, sorry. I would really like to know your opinion, whether you are a Technic fan, a Formula 1 fan, or a casual builder looking for something nice and impressive, please share your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget guys to stay nice and respectful, Maybe it is a weird concept, but people can have very different opinions about the same thing and everyone can be still right from their own perspective. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, 
Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and the bell as well. The week is far from being over and there are still a whole bunch of reviews and videos in the pipeline. So see you very soon. Bye bye.